Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside me today. Today we're taking a step off the beaten path and we're taking a look at a compound bow kit. In this case, the Sanlita Dragon X8. So if you're looking to buy a compound bow package for a kid, for a lady, or if you're a grown man and you want to buy your first one yourself, it's a pretty good chance you ended up on Amazon. It's a pretty good chance you've come across the Dragon X8 before. Now make no bones about it. Sanlita reached out and offered to send me this bow, and I said yes because I can't get American companies to respond outside of Athens to get a bow to review here for the 2022 year. So Sanlita's like, hey, we'll send you a bow. I'm like, hey, sounds like we're going to get a review. But in all honesty, the real reason why I got this bow was because of my kids. Now, my kids are still a little bit on the small side to be shooting full-size compound bows like this, but they're not getting any smaller anytime soon. And so in order to have this bow package ready to roll, I figured, yeah, let's give it a shot and let's see what this bow has to offer. Right now, it is, I think, the best bang for the buck in terms of just a bow you buy off of Amazon. Right now, the black, I think, runs about $259 and the camo option, a $269. And that is for everything that you see here on the table. We'll go through it and we'll go through installing some of the accessories as well if you're unfamiliar with how to install sights and rests and everything else on your bow. Inarguably, this is the best compound bow package for the money. All the things that come with it. You have a soft bow case, 12 arrows, which are plus or minus. We'll talk about those later. A five pin, totally machined aluminum uh, with the just the exterior sight housing being plastic. Not wrapped fibers, but again, price point. You come with a wrist sling, a small stubby stabilizer, which is basically just used to hold on the wrist sling. You do have a three brush style plastic rest, an actually halfway decent quiver, and then a release, an arrow puller and a kickstand and the peep is already installed in the bow now it's not going to be installed where you need it to be for your draw length and how you anchor and so on and so forth we'll get to that later on down the road and i have plenty of videos on finding peep height and setting up a bow correctly there's a d loop even installed so this bow right out of the box you can throw all the components to and just start slinging carbon down range you don't have to worry about anything which is not to be said of most of the major u.s manufacturers now of course this bow is more cheaply made i believe this is a cast riser although the uh, limbs are actually going to be your standard glass limb that you would see of course your limb pockets are also going to be of this cast uh uh, material as well uh you know the strings are not nearly the same quality they, they seem like a d97 but again 259 or 269 bucks for all of this shoot you can't buy all of this in the united states for most of the stuff here of this level of quality for 259 bucks so to get a bow in the package it's actually a pretty solid deal and particularly if you're looking at getting your very first bow or getting a, a family member or friend into the sport and you're not really sure if they're going to like it or not so that's the thing with me and my kids now, like i said my kids are a little bit on the small side still to be shooting a full-size bow like this but eventually they're going to be into archery, right? You're not going to get away with that with me as their dad. My wife also shoots a little bit as well, and this bow would suit her. Now, it does go out, and I'll throw some specs onto the screen. It goes out to 31 inches, which is my draw length. Oh, this is a pretty short axle to axle bow. Not really the thing that I want. And it goes down to, I'm guessing, close to 10, up to 70 pounds. So that's pretty impressive what you can do with this bow in this price range and uh, all the modularity and adjustability the cams are machined the modules are machined it does actually have sealed bearings not just plastic bushings that's pretty impressive as well the actual fit and finish of the bow is pretty decent you do have a normal carbon style cable rod you do actually have like I don't know decent components installed onto this bow for again less than 300 bucks shipped right to your door St. Lena didn't offer to pay me for any of these videos or reviews, and I simply <laughs> rejected any affiliate payment as well. I actually want to shoot this bow, use this bow, uh, give you an honest feedback and review, and then, of course, have my kids use it later down the road. But let's look through at all the stuff here and getting it installed on the bow, because it's actually pretty simple. And Selena even, and I'm a big stickler about this, if you've ever seen any of my other bow reviews before, the uh, manual actually makes sense and actually works out really well. It goes through all the different diagramming parts of the 
the bow, how to adjust the uh, cross of the cables, how they're supposed to go through the cable slide up in here, uh, using a bow press, right? What the brace height is, what the axle axle length is, how to adjust the draw length on the cam, how to change the poundage. Uh, and then all through here, it has the module. And this is super important for all these highly adjustable in both draw length and weight bows. It has not only the draw length with the corresponding number or letter on the module, but also has the peak poundage that you can expect. You're not gonna take this bow down to 18 inches and then get 70 pounds of draw length. And same thing, you're not gonna take it at the 31 inches and get peaks in the really, really low teens, right? So at the number one setting, which is 31 inches, you can get 70 pounds of peak performance. And then it goes down by about a half a pound as you lose inch, uh, a half an inch of draw length. So for example, down around my wife's draw length, which about 24 and a half to 25, she can expect a peak of about 58, 59 pounds. And down for a kid, down to a uh, about an 18 inch to that 22 inch, you're only gonna get about a peak weight of 50 pounds. That's a peak weight, so it can drop obviously a lot lower than that and so that's pretty solid out of a highly adjustable bow most bow companies that make a highly adjustable bow have that type of performance uh, that does peak out at a particular draw length at the maximum of the cam so don't expect to have a 28 inch draw and get 70 pounds out of this limb and quite frankly out of a cast riser and this style of system i wouldn't want to shoot it at 70 pounds anyway this is definitely geared towards the smaller frame lighter pounded shorter draw archers and i definitely would shoot it that way which makes the arrows and we're going to pan over this way a little bit different uh, so these arrows do come factory fletched they are 30 inches AMO length. They do have a standard insert and a 100 grain point. The problem is, is that these are very cheap carbon arrows. They're still gonna be pretty durable, uh, but they are cheap fiberglass carbon arrows, which makes them incredibly heavy. It makes them great for kids uh, because they can really take a lot of flex and a lot of light pounded short draw uh, shots into rocks and branches and trees and everything else and not absolutely explode. But the problem is they weigh 530 grains on my scale. A 530 grain stock arrow like this is incredibly heavy uh, there's no labeling on here what the GPI is or anything else like that but if you're gonna shoot this as a lady or a kid or a really short light draw poundage archer 530 grain arrow is going to just beach ball its way to the target it might not even have enough energy with a kid to even stick into the target so I would strongly recommend if you're not going to be shooting 30 pounds 35 pounds at least uh, to definitely upgrade your arrows uh, and even so again with the cost of the package upgrading your arrows wouldn't be a half bad idea anyway no idea what the spine is or the stiffness of the arrow 530 grains means it's a very thick walled carbon fiberglass build and i would just recommend you trust yourself with a little better manufactured arrow from a company like easton serious victory or gold tip so the bow does come with its uh, Allen keys already there in a package, a couple of extra screws as well. I'm not going to use those. I'm going to use my own adjustable set, uh, but those are already in the package. So everything right here with you is already on the bow or with the bow ready to roll. You don't need to buy anything else. The bow, I think it's kind of odd, comes with the uh, rest bolt installed already and the two sight bolts installed ready. So you're going to have to take those out in order to install those components. So I'm going to start that. I'm also going to get the uh, stabilizer and and the wrist sling install, which if you're a first time shooter, I strongly recommend you shoot with a wrist sling because you don't want to drop your bow. Installing a stabilizer and wrist sling is quite straightforward. And since this one doesn't even need to be wound around itself, all you're going to do is put the stabilizer right through the hole and then thread it into the bushing. Now, the nice thing with stabilizers in general is they do absorb a little bit of hand shock and noise. I haven't shot this bow yet to know how that's going to exactly work. Uh, but this is not going to reduce much. It's going to reduce a little bit, uh, but more or less, it's just here to hold on the uh, wrist sling. You can adjust it. You'll fold that last tag end up by itself, but you get the idea. The shooter sticks their hand through here. That's a little bit too tight. If they accidentally let go, the bow is not going to fall to the ground or out of the tree if you're hunting, that style of thing. I personally do not use a wrist sling myself, but I've also been shooting a bow for nearly 20 years, uh, and I feel very confident in how I shoot in a hunting situation. So I'll just uh, double this back over itself but I personally wouldn't use this. Moving right along here, let's go ahead and pull out the uh, rest bolt here. If I didn't mention already, the kickstand also came with the bow package and the way that it sits on the limb, it actually is quite uh, stuck on there. So I actually would recommend uh, sitting it up as close to limb pocket as possible and shooting it with it on the bow. It's not gonna damage anything, it's not touching anything at all that's going to be moving. The limb's gonna flex way further down out here. And so that way, whenever you're done shooting, you just 
set the bow down, you're done. You have to constantly pull that in and out of your quiver. Most kickstands aren't that tight, uh, and so to reduce the uh, chances of you marring up your limbs, just leave it on there. Why not? And we can always fine tune this later. It's not a problem. This is a very cheap, uh, we call it a, a hostage style rest as that was one of the first companies. Three brushes, three bristles, very simple, uh, nice and uh, easy to hold the arrow on there. You can even tip this arrow then upside down. Just loads in through the top and then this bow can be put any direction at once. It's not going to fall out. Now this is kind of an interesting note here as I hadn't done anything with this, uh, but these arrows are fletched so far forward here that they're coming in contact almost with the uh, bristles of the rest. This is quite a gap here between the knock and the back end of these fletchings. I like to see that move back significantly, a solid half of an inch, uh, definitely at least three eighths of an inch. It doesn't need to be that far forward, but it is what it is. One thing I get asked a lot at, uh, working on a whole bunch of different sites and rests in the shop is, is there a standard size uh, for these style of bolts? And the answer is no. Some are shorter, some are longer. Uh, some are this conical shape head. Some are a flat head. There's a whole bunch of different styles depending on the rest and the manufacturer and the thickness of the riser. So uh, th in terms of the uh, Allen key size, quite often here, there are a lot of them are this one eighth size here, which is nice to see. Uh, on an Archer's Island set like this. But in, in terms of the actual length and the head size and that type of stuff, no, there's no real standardized measurement. Side installation is pretty straightforward, and I always like to choose the holes that are furthest back on the sight bar. Also, while I'm here, I'm going to uh, take off this part of the quiver bracket here. This is the mount system. And uh, I'm going to mount it here with the uh, supplied screws. And a lot of these uh, quiver brackets and quiver mounts and stuff, uh, even on more expensive quivers, are often plastic. Uh, so you don't want to over torque them. I'm just going to get them so they're seated snug and definitely not rattling loose. Just finger tight's all you need. So now with your rest installed, the peep's already in the bow, even though it's not in the right place. And we have the quiver installed. We also have the wrist sling and the stabilizer. You're now actually ready to set up your release. Now, I am very happy that Sanlita used a style of release that has this lanyard system. So a lot of uh, wrist style, uh, strap style releases use a post system, either a piece of all thread that runs through a um, silicon or rubber sleeve, or sometimes they're on like a tooth system, like Spot Hog uh, or a Hot Shot. In this case, this is a lanyard style which allows you to get this super duper short uh, so you can use this I'm gonna open this up a little bit here make this very very long so you can uh, lengthen the the length of this release I'll put this on while it's quite long and also since it's velcro you can usually get uh, little arms and little wrists in here so for kids and uh, shorter statured women so traditionally for a wrist strap style release, you want this not to be up in your fingers when you are holding it. You want this actually to be down closer to the tip of the jaws is in the middle of this middle pad of your finger, middle finger here. So this is quite long. Well, because this is a nice wrist strap, lanyard style release, I can actually just cinch that up. And now it's actually at a more appropriate length for me. If I'm a little kid, I can cinch it up even further and look how tight I can get that. All right, that's down to the middle of my palm. So you can really uh, allow this to adjust and to fit uh, any style of archer in terms of their hand size. And that's a huge benefit. A lot of uh, compound bow packages that come with a uh, lanyard style release like this don't have enough adjustment for ladies and for kids. And that's a real big bummer because then oftentimes they have to buy the junior set, uh, which is another, again, 20, 30, 40 bucks in addition to the cost of the bow. The fact that Sanlita actually includes a wrist strap style release that with the lanyard makes that really nice. So I want to do two things with this bow. One, I want to set it up to my draw length and a relatively high amount of poundage, close to 60 pounds, or at least a ballpark. And then I want to set it to a kid or a lady or a youth archer size, close to about 25, 26, and maybe even shorter, and closer to 35, 40 pounds, and see what we get out of the draw cycle, see what we get out of the back wall, see what we get in terms of the feel of how to shoot the bow. All right, so we got this kind of more set up and situated so that way I can uh, shoot a few arrows into the target right here. Have it set up to 30 inches of draw as the module says, 31 inches, excuse me, as the module says, and I have it at 60 pounds according to my scale. We're gonna shoot their arrows. Uh, the peeps, like I said, is not gonna be set up. Uh, and guess, if I had to guess on draw cycle, uh, it's gonna have a hump at the beginning, it's gonna build up very quickly, and then it's going to peter off very quickly uh, as most highly adjustable bows kind of tend to have that. Uh, kind of let the you know build up a little bit of speed there at the beginning but it'll be very easy as it pulls back through the draw cycle i expect the back wall to not be fantastic out of a sub 300 dollar 
compound bow package. I keep trying to remind myself that this bow is 200 bucks by itself, right? So that's a that's a pretty impressive uh, price point for machine cams and and modules and decent, pretty decent limbs. You know, it's a cast riser. It's still offered, I believe, in left and right handed. So. I don't know if you're trying to get your kid or your wife or your girlfriend, your boyfriend set up for a halfway decent little bow. This might not be a half bad idea. I am using my release, which is a hot shot impetus because uh, I like that open hook. But let's kind of feel out the draw side here. The grip is fantastic. Uh, it's a nice flat back grip. It's not too wide. It might be wide for little kid hands, uh, but for, you know, I have pretty decent sized hands. Even for my wife, I feel like this could be a good sized grip. Uh, this uh, powder coated style finish on this riser is actually really nice, has a little bit of texture to it. And I forgot to mention, as I just see it here, this sight does have a light to it. So it will light your pins up. You do have to remove the little plastic spacer that's in here just to unscrew it from itself. Uh, and then there's the batteries in there and then take out the plastic spacer that uh, disconnects from the terminal. Uh, so let's take this back here as a draw and let's see what we got. Oh yeah, it builds up very strong and then, uh, then it just... There's not, it's just this, this whole thing is constant right here. This last, that's like drawing a recurve, but it doesn't build. All of the, uh, all of the push is right at the beginning. Yeah, it just, <laughs> once you get over that hump, it just slams back, which when you put this in a kid's hands, uh, and they're drawing it 19, 20, 21, 22 inches, you know, 15, 20, 25 pounds. That's what you want. Build up very quick and then release very quickly. Yeah, there's just this whole, I mean, you can see how easy that is to let off. It feels like lower let off. Back wall is not atrocious for a highly adjustable bow, but you see how, how soft it is to let down. There's not a whole lot of let off here. Um, but uh, yeah, it has that very, front heavy draw cycle let's shoot this shot yeah peep is way too high and the draw is way short so i'm a 31 inch and that i'm really scrunched in that feels closer to like 29 that's pretty quiet i mean granted that's a 530 grain arrow uh definitely some vibe on the shot um, I'm trying not to take it too seriously here. You know, I used to test in thousand dollar bows. Um, I do wish these fletchings weren't fletched so daggum far forward. Um, but that's very solid. You heard how quiet that was. Granted, 530 grain air. We'll put some other ones through it that are significantly lighter. Yeah, a fair amount of jump on the hand. But again, I, this, this bow is not meant for me. Right, uh, this bow is meant for shorter draw. I'd say really up to probably about 28 inches at the most. Um, 50, 60 pounds. I mean, this handles 60 pounds, okay. Yeah, I mean, even for having cheap strings on it, you know, they look like D97. This isn't gonna be 450, 452X, Bloodline, VEC 99, that type of stuff. This one might at the most be 8125 which was a long time used for uh, cables as well. Uh, but like the, the servings are tight. You know, the yolks look good. You know, there's no fraying, no premature dry rot here. Being this dual yoke, uh, highly adjustable cam system, a lot of manufacturers offer this, this dual yoke. Uh, PSE, Elite, um, Diamond for a while, uh, had the, the Infinite Edge, had the dual yoke system. Yeah, just yeah. I mean, I mean, I can <laughs> at 60 pounds. I can't do that with my other bows that are hanging behind me here. Um, this thing, I think, is supposed to be IBO 310. I'd be surprised if it made that. But it offers a very pleasant shooting experience, and particularly less than 300 bucks. So I'm actually interested to shoot this at a kid draw length. So I'm going to set this up to about 23 inches, 24 inches, somewhere in that. Uh, flavor set it up to probably closer to like 30 35 pounds and see how it shoots all right so we got the bow wound out quite a bit and we have it on the number seven draw module so this is going to be really short <laughs> for me now uh we probably wound off i don't know a couple of two three turns here on it so let's see how this feels here at this more uh kid friendly didn't know that arrow fully knocked there let's see how this feels at that more kid friendly 
youth friendly, women friendly. Yeah. Okay. So there's a much higher let off there. So this berry that feels more like the let off you would expect out of us. So this is seven to eighty percent let off. There's no way to change that. That just changes based on the draw length. So that's actually pretty nice. Uh, that's still so it's just a little hump right here, and then you can just oof, it just it just releases on you, and you still have a lot. This is how long your valley is. So I'm just basically pushing that in and out. Uh, I'm not holding anything back until right about here. So you've got a solid, what, two inches, and then right around there it takes off. So as a kid, or as a lady, or as a first-time archer, you take this and reef that back. That is a little bit aggressive, but at least, you know, your kid's not sitting here trying to hold back 20 pounds, right? Yeah, pretty good amount of let off there. That's actually halfway decent. It is a little scary that it jolts back that quick. You know, you don't want accidentally somebody to kind of jolt back and then do that and punch themselves in the face or, you know, take their knuckles off the um, off the uh, cable guard here. Mm -hmm. But let's just take a shot here. <laughs> like I said, super short. Yeah, see there, there's... With a 530 grain arrow, that bow, that arrow is barely leaving the bow. Although here at about seven eight feet, it's um, getting full penetration into a full bag target over here, so that's nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can hear how quiet it is. There's no vibration with it whatsoever, but also there's you know no draw length or draw weight to it either. So, as a, as a kid bow, as a ladies bow, as a first time archer bow, a growing archer bow. I mean, in terms of the shooting experience, yeah, that's nothing, right? I'm not having to death grip it to keep it from falling over. Um, that's actually kind of nice. <laughs> kind of makes me wish I had a, you know, a 23, 24 inch draw length. It's kind of like shooting a slingshot for me, how short that is. <laughs> it's nice for, very nice for a youth bow, a ladies bow, a kid's bow, a first time archer bow. Uh, that draw cycle is very accessible. The let off there and the shorter draw lengths clearly is a lot nicer uh, than it is back in my 31 inch draw length and particularly that 60 to 70 pounds. I think Sanlina has a great price point uh, for the mom and dad trying to get their uh, kid, their grandson, their uh, granddaughter, their niece, their nephew, or your spouse or your loved one, trying to get them into the sport of archery at a very entry level price point. You're not out that much. 260 bucks, 269 bucks uh, for the black or camo options uh, with all the accessories, everything you would need to get into the sport of archery. That's really hard to beat. So that's all for my first right out of the box impressions of review of the Sanlita Dragon X8 Compound Bow Package. If you have any questions that I left you with, please do follow the links in the description below. Hit me up over on Facebook, Instagram, Average Jack Archery, an email, AverageJackArchery at gmail.com, or drop a comment here on YouTube. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.